Guard New Minshew has all of a sudden sort of come out of nowhere to be a very fun quarterback to watch, and also a pretty competent quarterback for Jacksonville as well. Through four games, he has 905 yards on 7.5 yards per attempt, and he also has seven touchdowns to just one interception. There's no need to overreact. I mean, this guy is a sixth round pick, and he is a sixth round pick for a reason. However, it's really difficult as a rookie to come in and just be able to be successful right off the bat, so I think it is impressive that he has just been able to come over and have some solid games. I mean, that's one of the problems with these later round picks, is it seems very frequent that they just won't get the time that they need to develop. You have to grow up in a hurry if you're a rookie. Well, Gardner Minshew, I mean, he's already looking like he's been in the league for a few years out there. But I thought he played well against Denver, and let's just jump into it, and we'll start things off with this play, where it's going to be a cover one man right here. So for Minshew, he should look around and decide which route does he like best against man coverage. And the one he's going to choose is going to be that route right there, which makes a lot of sense. You know, hit your receiver in the flat, you'll pick up some yards, you'll at least get like 5 yards or so and create an easier second down situation. But what I like about Minshew is, as you see right when the ball is snapped, his receiver is going to get open. But if you look at him, he's already in the process of making this throw. It's just that lack of hesitation and just making a throw exactly when you have to, and that's what you like to see out of a young quarterback. It really is. A guy who's already being willing to just throw the ball downfield. He made the quick throw when they were able to gain 6 yards, but keep in mind, if he kind of waited a little bit and didn't make that throw as well, it could have easily been incomplete or just gone for less yards. So that's why people say having confidence as a quarterback is a pretty big thing. It is a deal. You know, you want to have a guy who is confident enough to make those throws. Well, give Minshew credit because he definitely is confident enough to make those throws. He does not hesitate, and that is very important. I mean, there are times when you have to be patient and have to wait a little bit for a guy to be open, but also there are times when you should just fire it through right away. Don't wait around if you have a guy open. He had a guy open there, so he didn't wait around and he made a good throw. There was also this play I liked where it's going to be zone coverage and the two receivers on the top half of the screen will both be running deep routes just in that direction. And then they also have just halfback running a check down right here. That's Leonard Fournette, and honestly, I could have made this video about him. He played really well against Denver. I mean, he had... 225 rushing yards. He absolutely had a good game. But anyways, after the ball is snapped, if you look at Minshew, he's doing a good job of looking downfield, seeing if something's going to be open downfield. He doesn't need anything to be open downfield, but if there is something that's open, he's going to take a shot there. If not, just dump it off to Fournette. But what I want you to look at here is notice how quickly from right when he looks at Fournette, is he then going to throw it to Fournette. It's almost all in one motion, which is key. Again, it's that lack of hesitation that allows Fournette to run and pick up a solid gain on that one. And that lack of hesitation really does matter in a lot of ways, and this plays another example of that, where it's going to be a cover 2 zone, and that's going to be the route that Minshew is going to want to look to throw to, since it will get into a gap in coverage. Although also worth mentioning right when this ball is snapped, the Denver Bronco in charge of covering the flat on the top half of the screen, he's doing a good job of staying deep and making sure that he is covering up that potential gap. But if you watch, that's actually DJ Chark Jr. who's going to be right there, and he's doing a pretty good job of just kind of faking out as though he's going to be cutting right here. And Minshew sees all this. He's following him all the way. He sees that his receiver is pulling on a good move right here. And so he's going to take the throw before he even finishes this move, which allows them to actually pick up the gain on this one. Maybe it could have been a slightly better throw, but if you can get the completion, that's all that matters at the end of the day. And there was also a play like this towards the end of the half where it's again going to be zone coverage, which is great news for Jacksonville because they have a perfect zone buster right here with those two players running those two routes right there. You can probably just see on the screen how it's supposed to work, but I'll explain it anyways. Essentially, the receiver who's running deep is going to push the Bronco who's in charge of covering the middle of the screen deep. Then another Jacksonville receiver can cut underneath him and he should get wide open. It won't go for a ton of yards, but it will go for some yards, so that's why you do it. And again, I know I keep bringing it up, but it's true. Watch just his timing as a whole on this one. Watch how he hits his receiver exactly when you want to. That allows him to still actually pick up a first down, despite the fact that this play wasn't really designed to go for that many yards. It's just good timing and good awareness and good football, honestly. I mean, it was just a good play by Gardner Minshew on that one. That's kind of why I always talk about timing so much in the NFL. And, you know, this next one will also be an example of that, but... Timing is just so key. You have to make sure you get the timing down or you're not going to be an effective quarterback. I'm sorry, but you're just not. I don't care what the arm talent you have is. I don't care how good you are at reading defenses. If you can't get the timing down, you're just not going to be successful because you won't be able to hit your receivers when they are their most open. 
But like what's happening on this play is the three Jacksonville Jaguars receivers on the top half of the screen are running those routes right there. And so you can kind of take your pick as to which route you like better. But for Minshew, it's actually going to be the out route that the number two receiver is running. The guy who's in between the other two receivers, the middle receiver essentially. He's the guy who's in charge of running up to the top half of the screen. And he's probably going to be the guy that Minshew wants to throw to here. And he's really going to want to make this throw because if you notice, look at where he is right now. There is an opening there that Minshew can try to fit this ball through. But also worth mentioning, if you look at the Denver Broncos player who's in charge of covering him, he's cutting in here, and this is actually how some pick sixes happen. If this is an inaccurate throw, or he kind of throws a duck, or just he mistimes it, this could absolutely end up in a pick six. So this is definitely kind of a risky play, actually. But if you look at Minshew, I mean, he's already actually thrown the ball, so there's definitely no doubt about it that he got the timing down. He made this throw as quick as he possibly could have. But also, it is going to be an accurate throw, and that actually just leaves the defensive back in charge of covering D.D. Westbrook there out of position more than anything. And with those plays being in a two-minute drill, that kind of just allows them to creep forward in the field and be able to be successful. Jacksonville played a tight game against the Denver Broncos throughout this football game, and it came down to actually the final possession. And so, let's just talk about that final possession and how he was able to actually come through with some big plays. So to set the stage, they actually have a decent amount of time left, a minute and 18 seconds left with two timeouts. And with already being past the 40, in this situation, you're looking okay. Although worth mentioning, since you only have two timeouts and not three, you can't afford a turnover here. You have to make sure you maintain possession. This will be your last shot, essentially. And so for Denver, they're going to play man coverage here. They're going to say, you know what, we're going to trust our guys and we're going to force you to beat us. That's what we're going to do here. And so for Jacksonville, they're going to try to find a way to beat them. So they have those three receivers on the top half of the screen running those three routes. And really, the key route to watch here will be Westbrook's route. He's probably Jacksonville's best receiver, although he only has 145 receiving yards through four games so far, which is a bit on the low side for a number one receiver. But at the same time, he had five receptions for 66 yards last week, so he definitely has kind of started to turn around a little bit. Actually, DJ Chark Jr. and Chris Conley both have more receiving yards than Westbrook, but I still think that Westbrook probably is their most talented player, even though he doesn't necessarily have the yards that some other guys on his team have through four games. But anyways, clearly it's someone that Minshew trusts in this situation because that is a throw that he's going to try to make. And as you see after this ball is snapped, clearly there's a good reason why I feel that way because he is going to get open at this situation. So it's all going to depend on Minshew's throw. And you know what? This is the difference between a game manager and a good quarterback. It's a play like this. Where I'm not going to discount being a good game manager and how difficult that can be. But the difference between having a guy who can just keep you in a game and a guy who can actually win it for you when you're down a point with a minute left is definitely huge. Sometimes you're going to need your quarterback to make a big throw, and that's exactly what Minshew does. I mean, look at how he makes a good throw, Westbrook makes a good run after the catch, and are able to pick up a solid gain on that one. I mean, that play put him in field goal range right there. That was a game-changing play. And also, one more play I thought was fun was just a couple of plays later when he's actually going to just really prove how confident of a player he is and how confident he is in his abilities. And it's clearly going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup right there on the top half of the screen, and he has a receiver running a curl route right there. So, okay, maybe something you could look to throw to, see if he's open, and if he is open, make that throw. I think a lot of head coaches would just run the ball twice here, force Denver to burn their last time out, and then get 40 seconds off the clock. Then if about 10 seconds left, you're kicking a potential go-ahead field goal. But it also just goes to show what the coaching staff feels about Gardner Minshew. They feel that he can come through. But what's really fascinating about this is, if you look at right now, okay, his receiver hasn't finished his move yet, so you can't really tell if he's going to be open or not. But for Minshew, he doesn't care. He's going to take this shot. He wants to make a throw, create an easier field goal situation, because he knows in a situation like this where there's a lot of pressure, those are tough on field goal kickers. So if you can make that an easier field goal, then that's what you have to try to do. So he's just going to take a shot, and for a good reason, it works out. They're able to get the ball actually all the way inside the 15-yard line. So really just a really smart play. I mean, I'm not even sure if I'd call it a smart play, actually. It was a it was a gutsy play, and that's kind of how Minshew plays. He plays with guts. And you know what? That's what you kind of have to do if you're a backup. You have to still have faith in your abilities, and you have to be willing to make a name for yourself. This is now several times that in the clutch he has come through, and I mean, he's just, he's playing really well. As I brought up in my Mariota video I just put out, it is pretty crazy that all four teams in the AFC South are currently 2-2, two and two. that's just kind of fun. So it's certainly anybody's game at this point, and let's be honest, Jacksonville was a two-point conversion away from being 3-1, and one, and then this is a completely different type of season. But yeah, I like Gardner Minshew, I just think he's fun, you know, I always think it's fun when these kind of storylines play out. 
I don't think that he's quite great, at least not at this point in his season. Like, I'm not saying he's bad, but let's kind of pump the brakes for a second. Like, I still think I personally would rather have Nick Foles out there. That's just my opinion. However, I do have to say, for a backup quarterback, he's not playing like a backup. He's playing like a starter. But yeah, that's just my opinion. So, that'll be my question I ask you guys. If, let's just say, Nick Foles is ready to play right now, who do you go with? Do you go with Gardner Minshew or do you go with Nick Foles? I don't really like to get into the hypotheticals of, what if Gardner Minshew wins three straight games? Because you never know how, how do you win those games, what goes on, but... Just in terms of right now, who do you like better? Do you think that Nick Foles should be the starter, or do you think they should just ride it out with Minshew? I always like just going with the more talented guy, and in my opinion, the more talented guy is Nick Foles, but I'd like to hear what you guys think, and as always, thanks for watching.